Okay, now that I've spent a little bit of time uh, <laughs> mourning the recording that didn't work, we have day four, part one and part two. Unfortunately, today is not going to be a process video because my recording, for whatever reason, is gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at day one or day four. Part one gives us a grid full of letters, and we have to find X, M, A, S in a number of different directions. Specifically, there are about eight of them. You can go from X down, bottom right, east, northeast, north, northwest, west, southwest, south, all of those locations. They all start at X. So for part one, we have to basically get the positions of everything here, find all of the X's and then do a calculation to figure out if they have MAS next to them like this one does. So X, MAS. For our solution, I decided to, as a const here, we built up a level of directions. So we're using Glam today to keep track of all of these positions because I tend to get confused when we use too many unlabeled positions like X's and Y's. I end up flipping my X's and Y's a lot. So an IVEC2 is an I32 VEC2. That's what these numbers are. We make a const here of the positions of MAS in each direction. So we have an array of MAS, eight times one for each direction. We just have that as a constant. It's all the offsets from X. So zero, one, zero, two, zero, three is X, Y plus one, Y plus two, Y plus three. Our input looks like this. So to get that into a hash map where the keys are these IVEC twos positions and the values are these characters, we take our input, we do a lines over it to get each line. We enumerate that, which gives us the Y index and the line. We then take that line and do cars to get the X index and the character. We turn that into a tuple of IVEC2, which is the XY position and the character that lives there. Because we've done it this way, we end up with this iterator inside of this outer iterator. So the way we flatten that is by using flat map. You can also dot map here and then dot flatten on the end. But Clippy will warn you about that and ask you to use flat map. The really nice thing is that once we have this iterator of tuples, we can turn that directly into a hash map because all of the first positions are IVEC2s, all the second positions are characters. And then we end up with this hash map here for all the positions and the characters at those positions. Now we don't necessarily need to build the entire data structure here. We could have worked just with slices, just found all the positions of X's, done the math, whatever. I decided to build the hash map. So once we have all of the X positions, we're gonna define a bit of a const here for MAS. This is the order in which the characters have to be. If we note from the directions, we're going in both directions. So if we go to the right, we will be increasing to the right. And if we go to the left, we will be increasing as we are decreasing as we go left. So everything is ordered correctly based on the offsets that we've set up here. So everything will be MAS. We take all the positions in general of all the characters, we filter out for only the X's and map over all of the X positions. Once we have all the X positions, we need to add all the offsets in every direction to it. So we iterate over those directions. Once we have each set of three, we iterate over that as well. We add the X position to the offset, which is probably better named offset. <laughs> so we've got the X position here and we add the offset. We get it. We get anything that would be at that position in the hash map. This could fail because we could have an offset and a position like zero, zero and negative one, negative one. So there would be no character there, but this does make the math easy. And then we just have the nuns here. We enumerate over this list to get the indices of each of the characters and make sure that all of them match the index in this MAS array. So zero has to be M, one has to be A, two has to be S. Once we've done that, we get a Boolean back from this for the directions. We can filter out all the false values and count them. This gives us a count all of the MAS contiguous from a given X. Once we have that, since we mapped over and created that and returned the count here, we can sum that up and we have the result. All of the MASs in every direction that are valid. Now this isn't the fastest solution I would like to point out, but it is a very straightforward one. There are a number of differences in terms of how we could do the processing, in terms of the data structures we build up, et cetera, but this was good enough. It runs in about a millisecond. That brings us to part two, where the way that we wrote it in part one actually makes a lot of sense to also use for part two. Instead of looking for X M A S, we have to look for X's that have M A S or M A S in each direction. So that ends up being four directions, M A S bottom left to top, right M A S top, right to bottom left. 
and the same for the other diagonal. Fundamentally, this is two changes to our algorithm. One, instead of looking for X's to start with, we want to look for A's. And then secondly, we want to make sure that there are at least two matches for this A. Now there can't actually be three or four because we are looking for an M and an S. So you're either going to see zero, one, or two matches for any given A. We do the same thing we did in part one, except that now our IVEC to array up here is a set of four different diagonals. We could reduce this down to two and then just reverse them or do a contains or something like that. I chose to go with the straightforward approach here. Our parsing, if you'll call it, same as part one, iterate over, build this hash map. Once we have the hash map, basically the same logic that we had for part one, including this MS array. The big difference is that we have to have two matches out of the set of directions that we're testing. So we do an equals two, and then we do a count at the end, not a sum. So not very large changes to get part two to work. And if we benchmark this out, it's not the fastest solution. It takes about a millisecond. You can see that part two actually does less work than part one. We're checking fewer positions, so that makes sense. There are a number of ways you could absolutely speed this up. For example, to do horizontal checks, you really only need to scan through once and check. We could even do that as we were parsing this out if we wanted to. Same thing for backwards. And I'm sure there's fancy optimizations that I haven't even thought of. So that's it for today. We'll be back to showing a little bit more process, having a little bit more explanation in future days. If you have any questions in the meantime, leave them in the comments. If you are participating in Advent of Code and want people to do it with, join the Discord also in the description. And I'll see you tomorrow for day five test.